Fear is the number one blocker of greatness. In this episode, not only I'm going to share with you what is greatness, you know, what I've learned in this space of greatness, I'm also going to show you some of the blocks that all people face in the space of greatness. And these blocks are the number one things that suppresses our greatness. Now, if we learn how to go beyond these blocks, greatness is pretty much guaranteed. Today's episode um, is really going to be taking a deep dive of what it looks like in order to achieve greatness. Now, I'm not just going to be talking about greatness at a superficial level. I'm also going to take a deep dive in some of the neuroscience, some of the psycho psychological benefits behind it, and also in the space of personal development. So super excited to have this conversation with you and take a deep dive into achieving greatness. Now, as you all already know, and this is a realization that came to me um, probably only a couple of years ago, right? So as Nero, I'm only going to have this life. Now, I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe, you know, there's life after death. And none of that is really proven. Let's just call it a spiritual belief. And I'm sure many of you have your own interpretation of what is, um, what's going to happen after, after life. And, and none of that really matters. But one thing that we know for sure is that as Nero Dallin, as whoever is listening or watching this, right? You're only going to have this life as that person. You're only going to live this year once. So isn't it our responsibility to see how far we can take it? Isn't it our responsibility to see how much we can push our career, our business, our finances, our health, our character. Isn't it our responsibility to create even relationships and parenting at the greatest level? Because here's the one thing that I realized along the way is that one of the most common emotion that we experience during death is regret. Studies have shown that we don't re regret the things that we've done. We don't really regret the people that we've hurt, but we do regret the things that we have not done, the time that we did not spend, the love that we did not share. So isn't it crucial and important that we actually step into this space and do the things that are important to us? So in this path of greatness, it's a commitment that we make to ourselves. It's a commitment that we make to life. It is a commitment that we make to our higher self, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whatever you want to call it. It's a commitment that we make to our creator that you've given me this opportunity and you will give me the tools and the resources in order for me to fulfill this opportunity. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to achieve this. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get there, whatever there looks like. So in this episode, not only I'm going to share with you what is greatness, you know, what I've learned in this space of greatness, I'm also going to show you uh, or, or talk into some of the blocks that all people face in the space of greatness. And these blocks are the number one things that suppresses our greatness. Now, if we learn how to go beyond these blocks, greatness is pretty much guaranteed. I'm also going to share with you some tools that is absolutely crucial for us in order to achieve greatness. So what is greatness? Greatness has three formulas. The, fir the first one here is that we need to achieve exceptional skill, not ordinary skill, exceptional skill. Now, let's talk about exceptional skill. Let's say you want to be great in your business. Okay, you want to achieve greatness in your business. Okay, so in the areas of business, whatever you do, let's, let's call it coaching, for example. In the areas of business, there is some exceptional skills that you will need to learn in order to be that exceptional coach. Now, if, you know, the last 10 years have showed me, <laughs> being a 
great coach is important, but it's not the only thing that's required. You also need to be exceptional in business. Now, that was a flaw that I personally missed in my learnings when it comes to coaching. It's like, I'm just going to focus on coaching. I'm going to focus on learning human behaviors and everything like that. And I really ignored business, which has bit me in the ass so many times. And I continue to do that. So that's not a great move. Now, if it's the area of relationships, for example, it's absolutely crucial that we learn relationship skills and not just learn it. We are exceptional at those skills. If it's your career, not only do you learn on being exceptional in that job, like for example, a town planner or engineer, not only do you need to be exceptional at that, you also need to be exceptional at the game of advertising, branding, um, advertising your role and what you've done, branding your skills. Now, all of these things are absolutely crucial in the areas of career. So the first part of greatness is, number one, have an exceptional skill. The tricky part is really understanding what skill do I need to be exceptional at? The second part of greatness is this skill, this field that you're in, it also provides you profound fulfillment. So guys, greatness is a long path. It is not for someone that is that requires a instant gratification. If instant gratification is what you are or what you're after, greatness is probably not for you. It is a long path. So during this long path, it's going to take you time to build exceptional skills. Now, in this long path, there are going to be challenges. There's going to be days where you don't want to get out of bed. There are going to be days where you're overthinking, overanalyzing. But the sum of all of that is that it needs to provide you more profound fulfillment rather than the day, dark days. And when I say it needs to provide you guys, it's like the journey is not going to provide you. The, the journey to greatness is only going to give you obstacles. But you need to be that person that is feeding your fulfillment more than your anxiety, more than your stress. You've got to learn how the neuroscience works within your body. You've got to learn how your neurotransmitters work within your body and really start feeding in the chemicals that it needs in order to feel fulfillment. So the first one is that you've got to build exceptional skills. The second one is that you will need to find, develop, create profound fulfillment. And the third one, which is straightforward, is that it needs to make an impact. It needs to make an impact. Let's say if it's greatness within your relationship, it needs to make an impact to the person that you're having a relationship with. If you're doing it in parenting, it needs to make an impact to your children. If you're doing it in your business, it needs to make an impact within your business. During this conversation, I want you to choose an area of your life, right? whether it be business, health, relationship, parenting. I want you to choose an area of your life that you want to achieve greatness in. Now, for me, I want greatness in everything, right? I want greatness in my career, my business, my health, my relationship, my parenting. It was absolutely crucial for me to achieve greatness in, in, all, in everything. So the only way that I'm going to achieve greatness in everything Right, and each of those areas will require its own exceptional skill. The very first step that we need to do in order to achieve greatness in everything is by achieving greatness in our character. See, in today's era, in today's world, we are continuously bombarded with distractions. People telling us what we need to do right now our parents, our society telling us what we need to do right now. And then our ego comes into the play and tells us what we need to do right now. And so there's all these noise that is happening inside of our head. By achieving greatness in our character, in other words, knowing how to organize your thoughts, knowing how to regulate your emotions, knowing what you want, why you want it, who you are, why you exist and what you're here to do. You might want to rewind and, uh, um, and uh, get all that information. Now, those questions that we all really ask ourselves with a 
great character, we are able to make decisions and take actions in, court, in accordance to that. Greatness is, it, greatness in your character, to me, is by far the most important greatness that you'll ever have. And guys, in order to achieve greatness in your character, you will need exceptional skills. Skills in organizing your thoughts. Skills to get yourself out of, you know, overthinking, overanalyzing, shame spiral, anger spiral, whatever spiral there, are, there is, right? We will go down and we need a level of greatness in our character to actually pull us out of that. That requires exceptional skills. The second one is profound, profound fulfillment that your character, in other words, without taking everything away from you, who you are as a person, as a human, this character that you have spent so much time developing, who you are is giving yourself fulfillment, right? Who you are is giving yourself fulfillment. My character made the choices for me, and I'm so blessed to have the character that I have today. Now, and, I, and I'm not saying this to impress you, please understand, I'm saying this to press upon you what it feels like to be fulfilled with who you are, not what you get or what you have. Now, I truly believe like, you know, uh, right now is difficult times, right? Everyone's mortgage rates are high, everyone's this is high, business not doing great or whatever it is. Now, I know I'm gonna get through whatever challenges that I'm getting through is because of my character, right? When I have insecurities, when I go down spirals and um, I don't spiral as much as I used to spiral, but when I do go down spirals, I know that my character is going to help serve change, whatever it needs to do, right? So that's number two is that you're, if you are trying to find greatness within your character and guys, this is by far the most important work is that your character needs to provide you with profound fulfillment. And number three, if you are trying to find greatness within your character, the third one here is that your character will need to make an impact. And this one here, if you've done the inner work, the inner engineering, if you've done right and, and continuously do so, build that exceptional skill have a character that fulfills you, the impact will be automatic. You will impact people without you even doing anything because your character is doing it for you, right? You will impact people just by do being who you are. You will find that career and excel in that career because of who you are. You will find that partner and build that amazing relationship because of who you are. And in that relationship, you will have that mental peace. In that relationship, you, it won't be more about like, you know, being understood. Like this is majority of the issues that couples say when they come to see me is that I don't think my partner understands me or respects me. Like that's not gonna be your challenge here in the path of achieving great relationships. Your challenge here is seeing how far you can take your relationship. So. Greatness is the combination of these three. There was a study that was done in, where was it? In uh, Leiden, Leiden, Leiden University. And it was um, published in 2019. And basically when they were studying greatness, what they realized is that there was this heightened um, activity in the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Now this is um, quite strange, right? Because often when the amygdala is activated, the prefrontal cortex, like, you know, amygdala is where the fight, flight, freeze, right? The prefrontal cortex kind of like, you know, shuts down a little. And what they discovered is um, when, when they were studying the brain activities, that parts of the brain was highlighting. And these parts of the brain, when someone is in the pursuit of greatness or achieving greatness, what they found is that the regions of the brains that were highlighted was actually motivation, right? Um, you know, social connection and reward processing. 
Now, so think about this for a second. Your flight or flight brain is activated and it's seeking for achievement. It's seeking for social connection. It's seeking for rewards. It's seeking for, for already having inspiration, drive, all of those things, right? And what they found here is that with the greatness mindset, what they're actually looking for is that when they experience fear, which is when the amygdala starts getting triggered off, they don't run away from the fear, they face the fear head on, which is why right, both the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala is being activated at once. See, think about it, guys. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure we've done a lot of things that um, we ran away from conflict because we're afraid of having conflict. We ran away from public speaking or, you know, doing this, uh, starting a business. We, we stopped doing all these things because our amygdala took over and we weren't ready to face our fears. Whereas when we're going through the greatness journey, we're facing our fears head on. And when we are facing our fears, sure, there's cortisol, but there's also dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin that is being released at the same time. More parts of our brain are actually being um, ignited rather than shutting down and going into the reptilian part of our brain, right? Imagine that you enter a conflict conversation with your partner with most of your brain being activated, right? How successful will that conversation be? Instead of going into a conflict with your partner, you know, ready to fight or ready to flee with all of your past triggers, your past traumas being ignited. This is the big difference between running away from your fears versus facing your fears full, um, head on. And so what greatness is really is, is addressing fear. So th there was another study that was done through Stanford University by this lady called Kate uh, Jamison um, in 2018. And what she realized is that when we are facing our fears head on, there is a level of adrenaline that's released and cortisol that's released. And the purpose of this is to heighten our alertness and create performance. But many of us don't really step into that, right? Many of us, you know, when cortisol and adrenaline are running through us, we don't go into performance, right? We don't go into focus, right? What we do is that we go into overthinking, overanalyzing, like, you know, being unsure, feeling lost, feeling stuck. And now everything is running everywhere and the stuff in like, you know, our adrenaline is working against us. Cortisol is working against us. Whereas in the greatness mindset is our ability to harness the tools that our body is releasing and then focus it, direct it into, you know, being that partner, right? Starting that business, you know, having that difficult conversation, whatever that it is that you're achieving for, you're facing your fears head on. Fear is the number one blocker of greatness. The number one blocker of greatness. Now, if we train our mind to go into fear rather than running away from it. And, and by the way, this is, that, this is that exceptional skill that I was talking about before. If we train our mind, right, which will require exceptional skill. So how do we achieve exceptional skill? At the start, we're going to fail at it. Right? Like with everything else, like walking. At the start, we're going to fail at it, right? And then build some skill and then build a little bit more skill, right? Until we understand the skill, right? And understand what else is missing from us. And then over a period of time, we get into exceptional skill. So the skill here in the greatness of character is our ability to face off our fear. I work with a lot of people that, have been hurt in the past and want a relationship, but are too scared to step into the ring and have that relationship. They want to fix themselves first. There is no fixing here. I mean, sure, you got to do the work, provided that you're doing the work, right? And building the skill of relationships, building the skill of character, that skill of facing your fear head on. That's the first part, right? So, Fear is one of the biggest roadblocks that you will face 
um, in your path of greatness. Now, this doesn't mean like it's going to show up in business, it's going to show up in health, it's going to show up in relationships, it's going to show up in finances, it's going to show up um, in your character work as well. Because like who the f wants to experience fear, right? <laughs> Nobody. So the first roadblock in achieving greatness is fear. The second ro roadblock that all of us will have is a shadow value. Um, now, a shadow value, uh, we'll talk about this later, and I might do another episode on shadow value, but it is, it is within the high performer warrior training. We'll be doing a huge segment on shadow values, but there is a shadow value called comfort. Comfort. Now, this value does not like hard work, right? <laughs> this value is about you know, doing the minimum to get by, right? And by the way, we all have this value. It's in the dark side of our character, right? Comfort is the reason why we reach for comfort food, is the reason all, pretty much most of our addictions comes from comfort. When you learn about shadow values, you learn that all habits come from our shadow values. Now, shadow values is not a good or a bad thing. It's actually a real good thing. Uh, it, it, it can be a good thing and can be a bad thing. So for example, most people that value comfort, you know, they might have a very successful business or very successful career or have a crap load of money and they like nice things. Now that may work out for your benefit, but the flip side of that value, comfort is avoiding the hard work, avoiding the conflict conversation, avoiding getting up at 5.30 every morning, right? Going for that comfort food, going for porn, going for that cigarette or alcohol in order for you to feel good. Now, comfort is all about feeling good. And th this is a shadow value that we all have, by the way. When it comes to shadow values, it's, it's, we all have the same shadow values, but we prioritize one or, or, or the other. That's, that's what's uh, different with each uh, individual. Now, comfort is going to be the second hurdle and it doesn't happen in order, but it is a second hurdle that gets in the way of achieving greatness because most of what you are doing, like building that exceptional skill, making an impact, creating a life where you're getting profound fulfillment. Now, when you have it, sure, it's very comfortable, right? But achieving that, it's not comfortable. Oh, here's a re recent thing that I found that you might be interested in. Overthinking, overanalyzing, anger outbursts are all behaviors of comfort. Right? And as someone that um, has spent most of his life overthinking, overanalyzing, you know, anger outbursts and all these things, I, I had to read that twice. I had to go through that twice. I was like, going, if you've ever experienced spiraling out of control, that's not very comfortable. So how the hell, how the hell, right, is that a comfort? Because it's so much easier. Remember, comfort favors easiness, right? It's so much easier overthinking and overanalyzing than making a decision. It's so much easier or more comfortable overthinking and overanalyzing than putting yourself out there and taking a risk. It's so much easier slash comfortable, right? Going into anger outbursts, blaming someone else, right? Than actually taking ownership. And so that was, I don't know about you and how it's landing, but for me personally, for someone that, you know, has devoted his life in their space of hard work, that hit me quite hard. But that's the thing about shadow values. Shadow values is the dark side of our personality. It's always going to be there. But as soon as we sh shine light into the shadow, right, we get to work on that. Comfort is definitely going to be one of those things that stand in the way of, uh, of our greatness. The third one, now uh, this is, mm, th regardless if you're after greatness, if you want anything just good, right? Maybe greatness is not what you want. And, you know, I, I suggest that you chase greatness. But even if you just want okay, right? This third one is 
always going to cause you misery, negativity, right, and disaster, which is resentment. Resentment. And I, as I'm talking about resentment, I can feel how much I resent resentment. <laughs> I'm now stuck in the loop. But um, resentment is this nasty, nasty, nasty emotion. Resentment is very different to anger, right? So anger, you can have an anger outburst. So your emotion goes up and then it eventually comes down. And when it comes down, it'll probably just stay at resentment, right? Uh, happiness, for example, again, it goes up, it goes, it goes down, right? Sadness goes down and eventually comes up. Grief, same thing, down, comes up. Depression, down, some, comes up. But resentment, resentment is an emotion that is always on. What I mean by that, is that you could um, resent your boss at work in your nine to five, that is about 20 kilometers away from your home, but you can bring that resentment home, even though you're not talking about it, it's always on. And the worst thing about it is, is that sometimes you can be, you know, having an intimate moment with your children or your partner, but because you resent your boss or your client or whatever it is, there's a part of you that is continuously not there. There's a part of you that is dedicated to resenting your boss, client, whatever it is, and you don't even know it's happening. But your kids will feel it. Your partner will feel it. And guess what happens to your kids and partner after a week, a month, a year, a half, a half a decade, of you having resentment towards someone else, it starts to spread. You know, when, because resentment is so silent, it's in our subconscious part of our brain, there's a part of us that is disconnected from who we are and what we love. And as long as we are feeding resentment, there's only a part of us that is, if, if that, there's only a part of us that is available to building that exceptional skill to creating that profound, fa uh, profound fulfillment and making an impact. And that impact is not going to be great. That fulfillment will never be achieved. And that exceptional skill is pretty hard as it is. So, um, you know, the chance of you achieving that is going to be pretty low as well, right? Resentment is the third block in the areas of achieving greatness in your character. Now, the fourth one is very similar to resentment, but it's called comparison. Right, comparing yourself with your sister, your mother, your brother, your next door neighbor, your best friend, your boss, whatever it is, is this comparison. Now, many of you um, may have heard that comparison is the thief of joy, right? Comparison is the thief of joy. Now, if comparison is the thief of joy and your mission in order to achieve greatness is to create profound fulfillment, well, you're never really going to get there, are you? There was a study that was done uh, in Harvard University in 2007, uh, 2017, sorry, that when we are comparing ourselves, right, with others, there are the parts of our brain that is responsible for creating social pain and distress, it's activated. And when these parts of our brain are activated that create social, social pain and distress, we then start impacting our own self-esteem. It disconnects, gets rid of, diminishes any capacity that we have for creativity, innovation, connection, focus, growth, self-improvement. All of these things are disconnected when we are doing comparison. And this could be, again, comparing your career with someone else that studied at university with you, right, or school with you, or comparing your business compare with someone else that is in the same field, or even comparing your body. The tools in order for us to achieve greatness, the moment we go into comparison, we are robbing ourselves from the tools and the resources that are already inside of us, the greatness that is waiting to come out of us, we are robbing all the resources that we have and the resources that we are attracting, we are robbing ourselves from resources of achieving greatness. Now, I want you to let that land. Comparison is not only the thief of joy, but it's the 
faith of your greatness. So let's do a quick re re recap. Greatness is achieving is the three part formula is exceptional skills, profound fulfillment and creating an impact. Now, if you have these two things, now the impact side of things will be somewhat automatic. The blocks that we have in the space of uh, in our journey to greatness is, you know, fear, right? That's that's a huge one. Greatness is our ability to take on fear head on, right? Resentment. It's an emotion that's always on and it blocks everything and comparison. Okay. So now just real quickly, I'm going to give you this, some tools right um in this path of greatness now if you're able to step into this right what you'll find is these tools are really going to serve you in your journey of greatness and it's also going to serve you in overcoming there was one that i missed the fourth block is comfort so sorry i missed that um so these tools that i'm going to give you is going to help you address each of these four blocks um, at once. Now, the first one here is um, spirituality. I'm not just going to say spirituality, right? Spirituality, and there's been numerous studies in that space. I think there was a study in the Journal of Transpersonal Psychology. I think the study was uh, University of Utah in 2018, um, where they found that, you know, spiritual practices, and I'll talk about the spiritual practice in, in a second, those people that do pr spiritual practices have profound levels of well-being and fulfillment. Now, we don't really need a study to actually understand that, but let's talk about spiritual practice for a second. And this might be hard for some of you to listen, and I'm really sorry if, um, if I offend anyone, but it might be something that you need to listen to if you do consider yourself a spiritual person. If you are a spiritual person, you will need to have spiritual practices. Make sense? Like if I was a cricket player, then I would need to play cricket, right? If I was a businessman, right, I would need to have a business. Make sense? If you're a spiritual person, you would need to have a spiritual practice that you are disciplined in on a consistent daily basis. Most of us are playing with spirituality. It's not part of our identity yet. We're playing with the concept of spirituality. We, we haven't gone into commitment, discipline, consistency, right? We don't know anything about it, right? Or even what we do, we'll talk about it on a, you know, logical level rather than an embodiment level. And again, if I've offended anyone, and when I say spiritual, I mean like, you know, spiritual or Hinduism or Christianity or Islam, whatever it is that is your spiritual practice, it's like, well, if it's part of your identity, like, are you practicing it on a daily consistent basis? So what are these examples that, uh, that was mentioned in this journal, Transpersonal Psychology? Now, what they found, yes, meditation, gratitude, but also, and... I don't know why this shocked me, but it did. Humility, humility. Humility is such a huge spiritual practice. And I think why it shocked me when I understood that humility part is because I would meditate every day, I would journal, I would be grateful, you know, I will connect with God and build that relationship with God as, as often that I can. But I wouldn't have considered myself as a humble person person. I, I, I wouldn't have found myself as a humble person. It's not something that was my go-to, right? So when I, uh, again, in this journey of greatness, what I found is that humility is a significant tool in this, in achieving greatness, right? Humility and, uh, and this is why I was shocked that this was new information is because one of the first conversations that I've ever had with my guru was about 10 years ago. Uh, so more than 10 years ago, 2008. And one of the things that he said was he, he, he loves playing mind games with me. Right. So um, one of the things that he said at the ashram that I was staying at is that Nero, do you know the difference between a fool and a master? And, and, 
he, by the way, he just came out of the blue and asked me this question. Do you know the difference between a fool and a master? And I said, I think so. Okay, cool. See, a fool is someone that loves to talk, loves the sound of his own voice, whereas a master appreciates silence and only talks when they need to. See, Nero, a fool is someone that thinks they know everything. So as soon as they hear something that they've heard before, they'll just say, yeah, yeah, I already knew that. I know this. Whereas a master, a master is someone that says, thank you for the reminder. The conversation went on and he started telling me a lot of differences between a fool and a master. But at the end, he goes, Nero, are you a fool or are you a master? Now, I was standing in front of a realized guru, a self-realized guru, right? And of course, I'm not going to say that I was a master, but you know, there was an egoistic side of me that thought it was a master. And right now, I understand that that was the fool speaking. And so what masters have that fools don't have is humility. When you achieve greatness, what you will have is humility. See, humility is often mistaken as weakness. However, it is this insane, powerful strength that is rooted in your self-awareness. It's your ability to understand that this perception of life is not working, and so we are looking for other uh, perception of life, other ways to see life through other eyes. See, humility is what gives us a sense of compassion, empathy, understanding, love, joy, mental peace, which a master has. A fool is someone that is continuously spiraling out of control. A fool is someone that think they know and they think they've tried everything, but they haven't stepped into humility. In the areas of spirituality, a, one of the most powerful tools there is this act of surrender, okay? The act of surrender. Surrender is not just turning around and giving up. Surrender is doing your best and surrendering the outcome. I'll say that again. Doing your best and surrendering the outcome. Now, what insane amount of strength will a person need to dedicate their time, money, energy in doing the work with the idea of this particular outcome, but also surrendering that outcome, right? There's a level of humility that's required there. See, humility um, is this honest recognition of your own limitation, which a fool will never do. A fool will never um, admit to their limitation. They'll just work harder at it, right? Um, Or they'll just be masking it or not even trying it but they'll never accept their own limitation. So in order to have humility, there is a willingness to learn from other people, a deep sense of respect for others, no matter how they live life, right? Or the choices that they make, there's this deep sense of respect and um, for life, for the person, and understanding that everything is divine in that space. See, Humility is not just the mask of being humble, it's your ability to be raw and open. So, And having this tool, right, in the space of humility, you're willing to be seen. You're willing to put your fears out in the table, right, and know that it will be rejected by people that are, that, that are more of a fool than what you are, but it will be rejected, but it will also be healed. By doing the work, you're also going to heal that part of you. Humility is that continuous practice of empathy, understanding, showing compassion. Now, when I'm working with couples um, and they come up to me because, you know, oh, you know, my partner doesn't understand me, right? Because yes, because you don't understand them, right? So there's two people in the areas of relationships who goes, oh, you don't understand me and you don't understand me. You don't see where I'm coming from. You don't see where I'm coming from. So the problem is that you don't see where you're coming from and you don't understand each other. But as long as you're going from the point of you understand me, no, 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 I'll understand you after you understand me. Well, of course that relationship is going to fail. Well, someone has to take the time and understand the other person. <laughs> but because of resentment, 
because of resentment of what's happened in the relationship, I don't want to understand you anymore. It doesn't make sense to me, so I don't understand where you're coming from, and I don't want to understand where you're coming from. So when you're practicing humility, there is that respect. It's not about what you're going to get. It's not about, well, if I give you empathy and compassion, what are you going to give me? It's none of that stuff. You're giving humility to others because that's the person that you are. You're giving empathy, compassion, and respect to others, no matter what they've done. You're seeking to understand that person because that's the person that you are. You don't have to agree with it, but you do understand. In the areas of business, humility is a superpower when it comes to leadership, right? In order to build teams and foster a culture of collaboration requires humility. In the areas of business, especially right now, things are continuously changing. We need humility to know that I, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't know that I don't know how to keep up with this climate. Like think about COVID, for example, right? I mean, like pretty much every business owner or every business coach out there, right, came up and said, I've got the answer for COVID. Well, f off you did. Right? No, you're just an idiot, right? It's like, you know, how many business owners came up and just said, hey, guys, I have no idea what to do. Sorry, business coaches came up because, guys, we've, as human race, we've never gone through this, but this is the stuff that I'm doing and I'm going to share it with you. That's humility. Now, if a business coach came up and announced this is the first time humanity is going through this, right? This is what I'm doing. I'm happy to share it with you. I promise you, I would have signed up, right? And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people would have signed up instead of saying, creating these you know, COVID care packages, right, on for business owners that most of them lost their jobs, right? Most of them lost what was important to them. Most of them still have not recovered, you know, four years later. Humility is an important practice, especially in the areas of business. So the number one tool in the order to achieve greatness is humility. Now, the number two tool, hear me out, this is still in the space of spirituality, is devotion. See, a lot of us, we are sucking in the space of commitment, consistency, discipline, focus. But the moment we are devoted to something, the moment we are devoted in that pursuit of that something, we will leap over tall buildings, change the direction of rivers, lift mountains, whatever it takes when we are devoted to that something. When we are devoted to achieving greatness, when we are devoted to our partner, when we are devoted to our children, there is nothing that will stand in our way. We will find resources, money, time, energy in order to achieve that something. A lot of parents that I've speak to um, when I'm working on their health, they will tell me about this awesome meal plan that they have for their children that is healthy, that is nutrient, that is, you know, hydrating them, that is all of these things. But they will, after the kids go to sleep, they will just eat junk. <laughs> right? And this is because they're devoted to their children, but they're not devoted to their health. There was a study that was done in Utah University in 2020 by this lady called Emily Smith. Now, what they found in um, individuals that they didn't just have goals, but they had devotion to their path, to their journey, journey, right? Whether if it's devotion to God or devotion to their partner or their children, it gave them a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, a greater sense of fulfillment, right? And this obviously led to success. See, when we are devoted to something, right? We are, we'll put in the hard work. We will overcome, right? This comfort need or this comfort value, right? We'll overcome that. We will, we are ready to face off our fears, right? We will do what's required in order to build that exceptional skill. And when we're devoted to that thing, hard work doesn't feel like hard work. When we're devoted to those things, we don't hold on to resentment because we know that resentment is taking me away from being that person, achieving that goal. We don't, we don't focus on any of that stuff. But when we are not devoted to something, 
Like if you are devoted to your mental health, if you are devoted to whatever your goals are, you're not going to waste your time comparing yourself with other people. In fact, if you see someone that is better than you, you're going to go up to them and ask them a billion questions on how you can model what they've done into your life so you can achieve that greatness. You won't be sitting there feeling sorry for yourself because you don't look like someone or they're doing business better than you. You'll be learning from them, not resenting them, not running away from your fears, trying to find comfort in order to cope with life. This is the power behind achieve, like in your pursuit to greatness. And this is why I truly believe that it's everyone's responsibility and need Everybody needs to find their path to greatness. That thing, that career, that relationship, that parenting, that character that you are ready to spend that time, money, energy, developing, creating, feeling that sense of fulfillment and making that impact to this world, to the people around you. This is why greatness is really absolutely the only thing that's worth spending time on. And the one thing that is going to ripple into all areas of your life by you choosing greatness. Guys, thank you for listening. I really hope um, there are parts of this that have landed for you. I would love to hear what landed for you in the comments. I would love to hear um, any questions that you may have, and I'll be really happy to uh, answer them. Guys, for those of you that are currently on online, is there questions that you have right now? Um, I'll, I'll wait for about 30, 40 seconds as you type out your, um, yeah, your questions, and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Do you guys have any questions on greatness? I, I really hope uh, this word of devotion really lands with you guys, eh? But it's such a powerful tool in order to make decisions. If you've devoted yourself to it, right, you're doing whatever it takes in order to get there. And yes, you will fail. If you are devoted in finding a partner or having a family or, or whatever it is, are you going to fail? Of course you're going to fail. But your devotion is greater then your fear of failure, right? I'll say that again. Your devotion to that thing is stronger than your fear of failure. That is the skill of devotion. Through Keith and I just say, said, um, how do you develop devotion? <laughs> the first thing here, and that's a really good question. That is a really good question. Um, and devotion does take a bit of time. And and in Keith, now I know for sure that you're all you you already have devotion, right? Like I know for sure it's it's you you've got devotion um, either with your family or either with you know your partner. You've got devotion somewhere, okay? So the very first thing in order to have that devotion is have clarity in what you're devoting to. And this is why religion and spirituality, right? This word devotion comes from religion and spirituality, but it, it's not often that we see devoted spiritual people, right? <laughs> like gurus and priests, some priests, right? But gurus and stuff like that, they devoted their life in spirituality. That's that sense of de devotion. But it's really understanding what am I devoting myself to? Right? What is this thing that I'm devoting? So let's say career uh, is what, what you want to achieve greatness in and devotion is a tool. So what specifically in my career am I devoting myself to, right? So it's having that clarity. And sometimes we actually need to overcome our comfort. See, comfort and devotion are in opposite scales, right? We've got to overcome our uh, need for comfort to really understand and make a decision on what, what am I going to um, devote myself to. So we need uh, clarity. And in order to achieve clarity, we need to have, um, we need to make decisions, right? Even if we know if it's going to work out or if we'll be good at it, whatever it is, right? Um, the second part of it is once you've made that decision, for me anyway, once I make a decision, I go straight into devotion. This has to work. I'm going to make it work, okay? But for most people, 
the clarity piece is what's missing. So in order to go from clarity to devotion, it's that real understanding of why is this important to me? So let's just say you go for a CEO role and you've got clarity. Yep, cool. I know this is my outcomes. This is what I need to do. This is what I need to achieve. Okay, cool. So why is this important to me? And this is the part where people fail at, is that they don't know the why. Why is becoming a CEO important to you? And this why needs to have significant meaning, right? Being a CEO or starting a business is the why can't be, well, to get more money, okay? So that why is a weak why. The why has to be significant because here's the thing. A lot of people start a business because they don't want to work for someone else. They resent making someone else rich. Well, resentment is a strong emotion, but it's not a strong, strong enough to create devotion, okay? So, uh, so the first thing is, why is this important to you? See, a lot of us, we start a career because our parents told us that this is what we're going to be good at. And so if career is something that you want to devote yourself to, and the reason why you're in this particular in particular industry or field is because, you know, our parents or a teacher or someone said that this is what you'll be good at, well, it'll be really hard to devote yourself into that field. That's kind of um, the key importance to understand why is being successful in your career important to you, why that CEO role is important to you, why this partner is important to you. And once you have that clear understanding of that why, the devotion is like, boom. But that why has to be strong. All right, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. I did not expect to speak for an hour, but uh, I clearly did. <laughs> uh, it's a big topic. It's something that uh, that is important for us all. But if as I said, if you can write down things or share things that you've taken away from today's call, it will help you concrete what you've learned and also helps me understand of what kind of materials that I need to focus more on. So, you know, if it's worthwhile doing a segment on devotion, then hey, I'm down to do that as well. So um, keep the conversations happening, post below um, what you're taking away and also any questions that you have. Love you all. See you guys next Wednesday. Bye for now.